and welcome back to Crimes from the East. I'm your host, Pia, and with me is your friendly neighborhood ghost. Who are you going to call? Ghost Alex. Alex. Hi, Alex. How are you? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? What's what's happening, cuz? It's the week of the Hallows. It is. A hallowed week? I don't know what it is. Halloween? Mm-hmm. It's Halloween. Halloween week, and I didn't grow up with it, so it doesn't mean too much to me, but my kid loves it. Yeah? What was she this year? We've gone to like three different events, like three different trick-or-treating things. And one day she was Princess Tiana. The next she was Princess Belle. Nice. And I kind of convinced her to put on really cute skunk costume <laughs> to kind of uh, balance awesome. the princess shit out. Princess Stinky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <gasps> That's what we've been doing. I have so much candy at home. I was just going to say, you must have quite the treasure trove. We do, because we bought like four packs of candies to give out to trick-or-treaters. But we live in this like cul-de-sac in the middle of the woods. We're tucked in to the woods. That's exactly how I would describe it. Very tucked in. Cozy. It's not an open street where kids can just go door to door and like trick or treat. No one's going to find this house unless they know where they're going. Like the main road connecting all of these communities is not walking friendly. You got to have a car. It's not even biking friendly because people drive like maniacs. Like put a freaking sidewalk in and you just change everything. Be nice. You know what the annoying part is? Even though there isn't much space to like run or walk or bike on the side of some of these roads, you will still inevitably find some guy in the middle of winter in like shorts and oh my god, no shirt, just running, running. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. I feel that. I'm wearing my double duty snow jacket and you're running in shorts. No, nope. stop showing off. Yeah. I'm not, I don't like these people no. who are just like, oh, it's a really cold ocean. Let's go swim in it. Why? That's the ocean's way of saying that now is not the time. They're just peacocking. Ice peacocks. Oh, what else did you do, Alex? How was your week? Oh, today there's a storm passing through northern France. Mm. And even though it was sunny, it was cold and windy, and there was just like little flecks of moisture in the air. So I just decided that today I was not going to leave the house. Is it going to snow soon, you think? It never really snows that much here. It's just gray and wet and damp. Oh. Yeah. We're probably going to get snow soon. So this is going to be a bad winter. This is going to be a true, think? true New England winter. Oh, joy. It's going to be oh, tough. Oh, joy. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What's the exit plan here? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Are we just hunkering in? <laughs> we're just going to stay down here in the basement? So we're both basically being like the living versions of our topic today and haunting our abodes without ever leaving, just, you know, hiding indoors all the time. So the last episode, we talked all about the demons. Demons. And today, I believe we're going to talk about boots or ghosts. Is that true? Yeah. Should we do like a quick little practice for me, pronunciation practice, before we get into this so that our listeners' ears don't bleed too much? (laughs) I mean, they're going to bleed. I'm sorry, but I'm trying. In the last episode, we we were both struggling with pisacha. Pisacha. I mean, that's just a tongue twister. Oh, my God. You know, there's some words I just can't say. I just, I can't. Pisacha is one of them. Well, this one should be easy, but I know I'm going to butcher it still because there's a, there's a palatal H and there's a, you know, a aspirated something and I'm just <laughs> not used to these sounds. Let's do it. It's boot. Boot. Okay, can we just like back and forth? You say it, and then I say it, and then you say it, and then I say it. I'm sure that's going to be fun. Boot. 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 You got it. When does that start to come naturally, though? This is what I'm wondering, because I've been practicing. So the hard T's, the hard does, does, all those sounds. You got to learn it when you're little. Dang. 
I think I've well and well missed that window. <laughs> <laughs> you want to exercise your tongue a little bit to be able to say all these weird words? Uh, start tying cherry stems into knots or something. I don't know. How do you exercise your tongue? <laughs> I don't want I don't want any suggestions, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's a danger. That's a slippery slope. Okay. Let's get into it. Mm. Talking about boots. Boots. I already messed it up. Are you ready? Let's do this. I don't think you're ready for this jelly. Cause my body too bootylicious for you, baby. These boots were made for walking. <laughs> so many good puns to make with this word. Totally. Okay, so today we are talking about boots. The ghosts. They are the ghosts of the Indian diaspora. So they come with you. You can't get rid of them if you leave the country. <laughs> they get a passport. They get a visa. They're flying right with you. I mean, just like the pishacha is coming to America. Political borders are garbage to boots. Boots are spirits of deceased people whose demise was untimely or unpleasant or people who are not given proper funeral rites. Your spirit is somehow so upset over it. Stuck. Gets stuck. So kind of your classic, what we think of even in the Western world of ghosts. Um, but it's also a catch-all term which can refer to a number of different kinds of evil spirits, lingering life energies or haunting entities, which is why it kind of gets mixed up with the concept of demons for me. Hmm. I'll talk about this a bit later, but there is a ghost science ghost that science. you can take in certain universities, apparently. And I, I, I need that class because I need to understand how this all works. Can you imagine an Indian parent, how they would react if their kid is like, oh, mom, I'm going to go study ghost science. Dude, this is in Indian universities is where I saw this. Oh, God, that's like an automatic tapad from every Desi parent I can think of. <laughs> we'll get to it. Um, sounds like I'm on board, though. I want to audit. So, boots appear in mythology, folklore, popular culture. Boots are shapeshifters. Mm. Um, they often disguise themselves as normal living humans, so crazy old ladies on the street or creepy uncles or whatever have you. The way that you identify these kinds of boots is that you should check their feet. This I know. You'll know it's a boot if their feet are backwards or if they are floating just slightly above the ground yeah. uh, because they don't like to make contact with the earth, apparently. So this is something very well known in all of South Asia, like lores and urban legends and stuff that everyone talks about, that all boots have like feet that are turned backwards like feet. 180 degrees backwards. So backwards feet. It's so creepy, actually. Like, I'm sorry to say it's so creepy because I have a feeling that, you know, someone might actually be just a unfortunate individual born with backward feet i'm pretty sure that's happened at least mm -hmm. once and that sucks but uh it's a very uh startling visual mm. <laughs> for sure yeah so i have one question off the top of my head already what's that are boots like flesh and blood or are they only ephemeral and holographic can you touch them so they take a lot of different forms. They can be slightly less tangible, let's say, but generally they are not the transparent Casper the ghost, airy Casper the ghost versions of ghosts that like you would have in a Western conception. So actually they're a lot more physical and they can cause some damage and really interact with the physical world. Oh, usually they are confined to the home building or village where they died. But they're also said to reside in old ruins, which is kind of cool. You know, I love a spooky ruin. There is a 17th century fort in Bangar in Rajasthan, uh, which is famously known for being a haunted site. Bhangar. 
I heard of this one town which was cleared out overnight. It's considered like one of the most haunted places in India. It is also in Rajasthan, so it's probably around this fort. Could be, yeah. There seems to be a lot of activity from what I read. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of activity all over, but particularly in Orisha, Bengal, Rajasthan, Bihar. Bhuti uh, hotspots. So yeah, maybe. And to that idea of an entire village cleared out, um, it does seem as though Bhuts may cohabitate. And sometimes you'll find a family household that was living together while living and continues living together while dead. That's kind of sweet if you have a nice family. A pain in the ass if you didn't like your family. Like, oh, I'm stuck with you. Right. If you're trying to get out. (laughs) I thought death would do us part, but no. Right. So that system of like family living carries on into the afterlife, it seems. But... One thing to keep in mind and fear not is that bhuts play by vampire rules, which means that they will not be able to enter a house of another person without being invited, which is a loophole I've always appreciated about the vampires, like such an easy, such an easy (laughs) defense. Love it, love it. Like I routinely say into the darkness and the voids, In my home, I will just declare, I do not give you permission to be here. Get out. Get out. (laughs) I don't know who I'm saying it to, but if there's someone listening, get out. Better safe than sorry. (laughs) Just to be safe. You want to live here? You pay me rent. Okay. Well, so apparently boots don't age well. What I mean by that is that while young boots might be mischievous... They're usually ultimately harmless, but the older they get and the older the bhut that you're dealing with, the more likely you're going to be dealing with a dangerous, malevolent, and even murderous entity. I mean, sounds just like the cranky old aunties and uncles in society. The get off my lawn boots. For sure. (laughs) I'm going to talk about one later that just runs around slapping people with chankla or with... um, Chappal? Chappal, yeah. (laughs) Oh, that is my spirit animal. (laughs) Which I'm sure is also a ghost that crosses all cultural borders as well. (laughs) Like there's definitely the Mexican ghost who's doing that, the Indian ghost who's Mm -hmm. doing that. African ghost. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, the things that bind... All of our beautiful cultures. Smacking idiots with a shoe. I've seen it. I've seen it in all these cultures. Um, so these dangerous boots, murderous, mm-hmm. uh, one of their favorite way of killing someone is uh, exorcisms or the exorcist style, like the movie. Uh, they will come up from behind or from right in front of you and twist your head all the way around, leaving your body sitting upright with your head facing backwards. Ooh, pretty hardcore. They're so obsessed with turning everything backwards. Backwards legs, backwards head. (laughs) It's true. It's like, my feet are backwards. You just got to get this all turned around. Weird. That might be their primary MO, but they're also said to suffocate their victims by choking them or magically removing their organs, like the liver or kidneys. Now, I would be pretty skeptical of this last one. Sounds like a supernatural explanation for some black market organ thievery, Uh uh except the organs are said to disappear without any apparent scar or mark on the skin. Wow. Maybe it's like a serial killer, Silence of the Lambs, style poot. Ooh, I'd love your kidney with some fava beans. (laughs) I mean, that's one thing I didn't come across too much. They'll kill you, but I didn't see a large amount of eating. It's more just terrorizing and and, and murdering, but not necessarily eating of the victims. I think at least 50% of Indians are vegetarians. They're not going for your kidneys. That's true. Uh Uh-uh. Yeah. Might attack your vegetable garden. Oh, just wait. I have some fun boots to tell you about. (laughs) But so back to your question about what forms that they can take. Um, If a bhut isn't disguising itself as a human, it may appear in a few different 
forms, as a ferocious animal or as a monstrous giant. They've even been said to form a sinister dark cloud. Unlike the Western ghost, the Bhut doesn't usually appear as this transparent, white, floating, anthropomorphic figure, but as uh, a monster more... Yeah, the figure under a white sheet thing does not work in India. We need to see your backwards feet and backwards head or whatever. A white sheet isn't scaring us. And it's not going to be as obvious. It's either going to be very obvious to the point that you don't even know what this booth was as a living thing, or it's going to be a normal looking human walking down the street on backward feet. (laughs) All right. So while booths are immortal, there are things that they don't like that can help keep them away from you. And I know what they definitely do like or definitely don't not like. Did I do that right? You know what's not going to work on Indian booths? What's that? Garlic. Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah. That's our lifeblood. Okay, so what repels them? Well, let me tell you one other thing. I can't confirm the garlic, but one thing they they definitely do like as well is milk. Boots yeah. have a thing for milk. They want it even if you have already consumed it. Yuck. Now, here's a word I was trying to practice with my mom earlier, but there's no chuta when chuta. it comes to boots. How is that? Uh, so, <laughs> juta means shoes. Shoe. Chu. <laughs> Chuta, ju chuta, chuta, ta, whatever you get it, juta. Yeah. Well, yeah. there are no cooties, there are no germs, there's no this thing of like my milk, your milk when it comes to booths. Ew. If a booth has inhabited a glass of milk that was left standing, and you drink that milk, you got a case of booth belly on your hands. Oh, and then you exercise the booth on the toilet. Is that how it works? <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, surprisingly, this isn't actually a bad thing. Okay. If they're in the milk and you drink the milk, they will impart their strength, their endurance, and their flexibility. Oh, did I mention that boots are very flexible? So they can stretch their limbs across hallways or across a house, and sometimes they'll do that absentmindedly. And not realize it. And that's how you catch them. (laughs) It's like, oops, I left my arm in the kitchen. Exactly. That reminds me of this horror movie I watched as a kid. It's this booth who is in the form of a woman. And it usually is a woman. It is. I noticed that. It's a weird thing. All booths in India are women for some reason. 99% of booths in India are women, which pisses me off. I don't want that kind of representation in this boot world. But this boot is trying to get this guy who's roaming around in, you know, ruins. He's in the ruins. Where he shouldn't be, probably. And the boot's arms start extending and he runs and the arms just keep extending. Yeah. Getting longer and longer and longer and longer. And it's probably like, I don't know, half a mile long. It was so scary. They're the OG Mr. Fantastic. Mm. <laughs> So, yeah, um, you drink milk that's a boot laden, a boot spiced milk, and you'll get superpowers. Okay. Um, so maybe let's leave our milk out for a bit and hope a boot comes by and decides to move in. Huh? I think this is an urban legend just to get people not to drink spoiled milk. That tracks. <laughs> so what they actually do not like are things like turmeric, water, and salt, as well as anything made out of brass or iron. So that means that they can't cook if they can't use iron. And and for me, this was sort of a hard like idea to grasp because why would a booth need to cook? Why would a booth need to eat? Um, but apparently they're really well known for stealing food and people do leave offerings to booths to keep them away or to sort of make friends with them because sometimes you can enlist a friendly ghost and it will help you out in your life. Maybe it's the thought that counts. They can't eat it, but they're so touched that you <laughs> left out an entire plate of paneer tikka masala for them. I'll I'll come back. <laughs> You're my friend. <laughs> you want to catch me as a ghost? Just leave me out some garlic naan. I love that stuff. Samosa? Yeah. 
I'll be back. Butter chicken, I'm there. Well, so the first specific booth that I'm going to introduce now, I think does eat food because this one also potentially a racist one. I don't know. Not like the booth itself, but the idea of this booth. There's something that makes me feel a bit uncomfortable. Okay. It's called the Mecho Booth, which is said to be the spirit of a Bengali person, usually a Bengali woman, whose love for the taste of fish persists into the afterlife. Mm. I'm going to become one. <laughs> <laughs> I predict I will become one. <laughs> you and me both, cuz. So these ghosts will do whatever they have to to get some fish, be it stealing, cheating, threatening, and even killing. If you've had Bengali fish curry, I think you'll understand. Like, that's how I feel. So the Mechu Bhut appears as a thin humanoid creature, but with fish-like qualities, such as scales and fins. It has puckered mouth and webbed feet, as well as fangs for added spooky factor. Um, and it haunts places where fish might be. So lakes, ponds, rivers, um, rivers. Uh, but it will come after you if you got a juicy fish. It's like the golem of the booth world. All it wants is a, is a little fish. Isn't that like a mermaid? That sounds like a mermaid. This is sort of like, I imagine like a some sort of frog creature. Oh, because they are supposed to have webbed feet as well. and Webbed feet, gills and scales and fin. This is, this is Ariel if she was Bengali. <laughs> yeah. And not in the, the ocean. It's like a land version. So that's the Mecho Bhut. I'm going to talk now about another Bengali bhut. Apparently, this is like the motherland of the bhuts. There are a <laughs> lot of different ones known about there. And this one is called the Gecho bhut. And it's decidedly creepier, in my opinion. This one gives me a little more of the creepy crawlies. Mm. It dwells in the branches of trees and it attacks passersby. It's a female spirit, again, that sits in the branches above paths dangling her legs and waiting for an unfortunate soul to walk beneath her. She'll jump onto her victim's shoulders, twist their legs all the way around, exorcist style, and kill them. That is scary now. This is not a ghost I want to ever meet. Yeah. No, sir. Keep away from me, ghetto. This is what the quintessential boot or churel or dian, which are all words for, you know, like a female ghost. That they show in Indian shows and movies, which is why there are all these warnings of never go under a banyan tree or a big tree at night. Definitely never sleep under it. That's why Indians don't go camping. Most of them. <laughs> <laughs> because of all these warnings that, you know, our ancestors have been giving us. So I've been trying to think with all these stories, what's the what's the cautionary tale? What's the cautionary spin, if there could be one? Sometimes I think it's just like kind of racist or something. Sometimes it's something unexplainable happened. Oh, what was it? It was a booth. But this one is like, okay, so when I'm walking down a path and there are trees overhead, you have to keep your eyes up in the branches. And maybe you're not going to see a couple of legs dangling down from like a creature about to murder you, but you might see a bird about to poop on you. And you want to save yourself from that as well. And if this is India, there's a lot worse in the trees than a bird, Alex. Oh, yeah. They could be like jaguars, leopards. They could Snakes. be jackals. Snakes, huge cobras. Monkeys. Monkeys. The worst of them all, really. The worst of them all. <laughs> Definitely do not be walking under no trees at night. Keep your eyes. You got to keep your eyes open. That idea, that visual of this scary woman out to get you is enough to keep most people out of the woods. Well, so speaking of the visual, this booth, it's not really, you're not going to mistake it for a person if you don't see its feet. This one is described as another lean and lanky figure with a cone-shaped head, large ears, and glowing eyes, which is also just, imagine seeing those eyes. Um, Alex? Alex. Alex. What? What are we talking here? 
that is an alien. <laughs> totally. I was waiting. When were the aliens going to come into this episode? <laughs> Very early. That is an alien. Come on. Totally. Cone-shaped head, lean, lanky, large, yep. glowing, glowing eyes. Glowing eyes. That is an alien. And I'm so happy to hear this because I've never heard of aliens in India. So there we go. We've had them all along. There is a category of booths called bego booths, which are strictly ghosts of victims of tiger attacks. So I like have no more information than that. Oddly specific. Right. Without any follow-up information, no description of what they're up to, what they look like. Like, do they have tiger features or are they just... Uh, are, are they, do they take the form of tigers or what, what's going on? Nothing. And that isn't even something unusual or unnatural. Tigers are probably a natural predator for man. Yeah. So, I mean, it's natural if you get killed by a tiger. That's normal. I wouldn't be haunting people if I got killed by a tiger. I'll be like, eh. Now, if someone's like killed by a pack of rabbits or something, <laughs> right yeah then i would haunt the world because i'd be mad i'd be so pissed how dare these rabbits kill me i guess maybe it's so much fear and energy from that sort of thing like really getting taken down by an apex predator that's such an experience that is quite u unique to humans actually i think so Maybe like your soul ejects. <laughs> Whoop. <laughs> Goodbye. So as I think you and I have both experienced, there is quite an extensive railway system in India. The largest in the world. There you go. And it's said to be teeming with boots of the more classic deceased person's ghost variety. One such example is the Kalka Simla Narrow Gauge Railway, which is said to be haunted by the ghost of an engineer named Colonel Barog. The story is that he was charged with constructing a tunnel through a mountain for the railway to pass, Okay, which was started simultaneously from two opposite sides of the mountain. So you can kind of imagine what a big error could be in that sort of situation. Two teams digging, trying to meet in the middle, and due to a miscalculation, they do not meet. They missed. So the uh, British overlords were not very pleased. Um, Colonel Barog was humiliated, and he took his life to escape the humiliation. Ugh, what a waste. One way or another, the tunnel must have been fixed because he's said to haunt the area, that tunnel that goes through the mountain. I wonder what he says. Every ghost, you know, repeats itself, saying the same thing over and over again for eternity. What does Colonel Barog say? I forgot one remainder. I didn't drop one number. I don't know. Math. Ten feet to the left. Ten feet ten to the feet. left. It was only ten feet. I yeah. said left, not right. I meant stage left. <laughs> <laughs> well, his ghost is said to wander up and down this tunnel, terrorizing anyone who attempts to walk through it. There are some tales of haunted metro stations, which I find a lot creepier. Yeah, they're underground. There's one in Kolkata. The Rabindro Sarovar station, where the accursed acoustics are said to drive people to jump onto the tracks. <gasps> oh, no. And apparently as well, the last bogey that leaves the station every night is haunted. There are reports of disembodied screams, flickering or dimmed lights, and three disembodied passengers <gasps> uh, with gouged out eyes and missing jaws just going for a last ride. Oh my God, I got shivers. Super creepy. That is scary. The accursed acoustics freaks me out because you can just imagine like the sound driving you crazy and then the acoustics just send evil whispers into your brain and then you jump. <gasps> mm -hmm. um, so another metro station, this one in New Delhi, in the Dwarka Sector 9 station, 
There have been sightings of a young girl with glowing red eyes, said to have been killed during the construction of the station. And then others have reported an old woman, here's our old woman, in a white sari and disheveled hair who slaps pedestrians and chases after cars. Someone needs to check her feet. She just might be a regular person. That's not a ghost. That's just a Karen. Yeah. (laughs) This image is truly, truly classic of ghost in a white sari. Why? Because white sari means that's what a widow would wear, essentially. It's the death color, right? Yeah. Back in the olden days, once a woman's husband would die, now she's a widow, she could not wear colored clothes. So she could only wear white. Unfortunately, widows were ostracized from society. It's terrible. Messed up. Add so much insult to injury. You already lost your husband, who maybe you didn't even want to marry in the first place. But he was taking care of you. And then he's gone. And then society is like, well, we don't want you anymore. Done with you. Now you're making them into ghosts? Like, you're solidifying the ostracism, (laughs) adding another layer to it depicting all these ghosts yeah because she's always looking for young men to haunt or grab or possess or do whatever she wants with them right it's the woman that's wrong always in every case totally so i find these very very misogynistic it it just it pisses me off it like manifests in really physical tangible ways all the time too like we've seen that in some of our stories I'm going to talk about an example, like, right around the corner now. Uh, Possession by booths is slash was considered by some people, like, to this day, I'm sure there are people who believe this. We've seen this in cases. I think in Deadly Devotion, we saw this. Um, It's seen by some people to be the cause of mental illness. So rather than calling the doctor, people will sometimes call on an exorcist or even travel to distant places, to see one, to have a ghost banished from their body or from the body of a loved one. Yeah, the tantric or witch doctor come into play in these kind of situations. One of these places where people go to find the service is the Mahindipur Balaji Temple in Rajasthan, where devotees worship Sri Pratad Sarkar, a.k.a. The Ghost King. Mm. So this deified former ruler is said to have subdued thousands of booths and jinns and made them his slaves. If you go there, the ghost of this ghost buster will get your ghost. He's basically Shang Tsung from Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Right? (laughs) All right, go ahead. At another temple, the Malajpur Temple in Madhya Pradesh, there is a tomb of a 17th century saint named Guru Sahib Baba. People visit his tomb to banish their booths, sending them off to live in the nearby banyan trees. And every year, this temple houses a booth mela, or a ghost festival, where mass exorcisms take place. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen this in uh, a movie. I don't know if we've done that movie as a Bollywood corner, but I'll do it for this one. Okay, cool. Fun fact about this temple is that for every booth that's exercised during this festival or around this tomb, uh, the possessed person, the now dispossessed person, is supposed to give their weight in jaggery to the temple. Wow. Sounds yummy, I guess. Jaggery is expensive and it was used in all of Indian cooking. Like we didn't have refined sugar, right? We used jaggery, which is, I think, a healthier form than refined sugar. Uh, This is like a nice little trade. And we'll get rid of your boots. Yeah, right. Coincidentally, right next to the temple is a jaggery shop. Store. (laughs) Sees jaggery. (laughs) No connection. No relation. (laughs) 
Um, so these boot melas happen all over the place. Apparently, there are some in Jharkhand, Bihar, Hajipur, um, and it all happens around this time of year that we are in right now, between September and December. So it really is the spooky season. Taking it back. And during these bhut melas, mm-hmm. as you mentioned, witch doctors or black magicians will congregate to, quote unquote, offer their services for a small monetary fee. <laughs> and I like this part. And a gift of liquor or ganja. Essentials. <laughs> you know. Right. Um, so for this small fee... The Oja will then drag a possessed woman around by their hair, beating them with a stick until the boot has been expelled. Money well spent, right? So, so you're going to pay this person to beat women. Here's uh, 10 pounds of good. Beat the ghost out of my daughter. And someone's going to be offended about us making fun of this. I, I bet. Come get me. How does this work? Like, the only thing you'll get out of beating someone is exhaustion. They're going to be injured and exhausted and not acting crazy, quote unquote. And that's how you cure them? Because now they're not acting nuts. Why? Because they're almost dead. Because they're unconscious. They're unconscious. (laughs) They're dying. They have a concussion. (sighs) Oh, those poor, poor people. All those victims of this exorcism like not just in india all of asia all over africa and i think let's not leave out western countries people have died as a result of catholic exorcisms and shit so yeah i was just listening to a podcast about annalisa michaels the german lady who went through like a 90 day not 90 day fiance 90 day exorcisme And she was basically, like, starved and beaten to death by a group of Catholic uh, priests. And in all of these cases, probably, like, maybe boots are real. Maybe they cause people harm like this. But usually I think what we're actually dealing with is depression, anxiety, sometimes epilepsy or undiagnosed disorders of schizophrenia, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But so apparently even certain academic circles believe in boot possession as the cause of mental illness. So we're I mentioned this before. I saw that there are some universities, I think generally they're like Hindu universities. Yeah. That offer courses and certifications in boot vidya or ghost scientists. Okay. And they claim this ghost science as a scientific approach to treating psychosomatic disorders, but they include in the course teaching traditional methods of ghost warding, exorcism. But in any case, like I said, it sounds fun to audit, like <laughs> really entertaining or interesting or different. But I also think like you should be obligated to take a psychology course. You know, typically, I think the both of us like to leave a little light on for the unknown. Yeah. You know, in our house of science and logic. And maybe some of it is true. Maybe there are things that affect you and make you act unlike yourself, act a little strange. Fine. But I I would be hard pressed to rely on a witch doctor to cure me first. Like maybe if you treated your mental health with a psychologist, psychiatrist, and improved your mental health, the booth wouldn't want to live in you anymore. Who knows? And you know what? More often than not, it's not the person coming to these witch doctors on their own. They're being dragged there by their family, by their loved ones. That's the sad part because you can't fight five people dragging you to these horrific ends. That's even scarier than the tree lady with the legs. That's even scarier to me. Yeah, it's it's a sad reality that ha- happens probably daily all over the world even today. So that's the overview on booths. But I wanted to switch gears a little bit. I just wanted to talk about some of the other strange legends and myths, tales of creatures, mysterious tribes, unexplainable things. So I'll just get into that. 
There's one that I can't stop thinking about. Yeah. And it's called the berry. The berry? So it may be berry. So the berry is an ancient thing that lives in the Lakshadweep Sea. The Lakshadweep Sea, for those who didn't know like me, is a body of water bordering India, the Maldives, and Sri Lanka. Most of the time, the berry looks like a large log of driftwood. It lies dormant for decades, even centuries, floating on the open ocean, barnacles and mussels and other sea creatures growing, living, and dying generations over and over while the berry sleeps. But eventually, it washes to shore on one of the Lakshadweep Islands or the Maldives, and there it lies on the beach, unmoving and unchanged. If the island is uninhabited, It will eventually be swept back out to sea and continue its course. But if the island has a village, and if a young woman from that village happens upon the log while walking along the beach, if she sits or stands aside it, the berry will begin slowly to awaken. Wait, this is just a log we're talking about, right? Yeah, this is just a log. But it will awaken. If there's a pretty lady, the log will awaken. Mm Mm-mm. Over several days, it will shake off its slumber and begin to transform, taking the shape of a handsome young man, of course, stretched out in the sand. Ooh la la. As dawn approaches on the last night of its transformation, the man will get up, walk into the village, and introduce himself as a visitor from a different island who has just arrived to this one. The disguised Betty will then seek out the woman who awoke him, seduce her, and marry her. Wow, this sounds really good so far. Because he's so handsome that she's not able to resist. Uh, Who can? So then it will settle into what seems like a normal daily life. But at night, it will sneak over to the island cemetery and unearth and devour the corpses of the deceased villagers one by one. Ew! So once it has eaten through the graveyard... It will turn its attention to the living, causing fatal illnesses among the villagers so that he has fresh corpses each night to devour. If a village gets wise to the presence of a berry and tries to get rid of it, the berry will then transform into a tall, slimy, hideous monster with gigantic teeth, which will then proceed to gobble up the villagers alive. So it saves that form for when it's caught. Oh, Otherwise, okay. it's very sneaky. Right. It only eats the dead. It might cause the dead to become dead, but then he's only eating the dead. Uh, but often it's not detected, and it will slowly eat through the population until no one is left on the island. When its work is done, or in the rare event that it is overpowered by the villagers, the berry returns to sea, transforms back into its dormant log form, and lies in wait, floating on the ocean for another age to come. So, there are several islands of the atolls, this area, that used to have settlements but are now deserted, and they're said to have been abandoned on account of the Berry. Wow, that would make such an amazing movie. So weird, right? It's like one of those, did you ever see The Lighthouse? I did, With Willem yes. Dafoe and Robert. It's like that kind of vibe of very surreal and like strange and ethereal, just like a, a, a log floating along. Again, I think this is a cautionary tale for isolated groups that live on these islands, right? Mm-hmm. Like somehow they've managed to survive hundreds, if not thousands of years. To them, this is a cautionary tale of don't welcome Outsiders don't welcome strangers, foreigners who land on our shores because we are not immune to their germs, to their diseases. One sneeze and that's it. The village is dead. I see why they made up this tale. I don't know why, though. That one just really stuck. It has so much atmosphere. I love that one. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about Pia, I'm so sorry, but I really want to talk about the people with no anuses. Um, what? Excuse me? I don't really know how to shoehorn the story into this episode. There aren't ghosts. They aren't monsters. They're just a group of people 
who are born this way? That were born with no anuses. So this comes from a 5th century BCE story written by, I think it was a Greek writer who encountered this group of people during a travel in um, the eastern Himalayas is where we are. He encountered this group of people that had no anal orifices. That's the last time I'm going to say that word, I promise. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So this Greek traveler, and we know this from our Rupkund episode that there were tons of Greeks. Right. All over the North Indian Himalaya region. They loved it for some reason. They were all over it. Why? Why did he know? He encounter this group why was he checking their butts <laughs> i don't know <laughs> why would he know um this sounds more like a pervert to me he's like <laughs> stop this is the butt checking post can't pass through unless i get a little peek what's happening how's he getting this information there is a whole story and i didn't want to get too into the details because it's pretty graphic actually is he asking them these questions or are they offering up this piece of unnecessary information as they're walking past it? <laughs> Hi. No, but I don't have a I don't have a butthole. Hi, nice mountain. Um, great mountain. We're just passing through, you know, we're gonna climb up the Himalaya and oh, FYI, we don't have butt. buttholes. <laughs> okay, happening? well, actually, now that you've said that, I'm developing a theory. But let me give you a little okay. bit of a backstory. The legend goes that uh, this was a group of goat and cattle herders who fed only on the milk of their livestock and chewed on a sweet root which prevented the milk from solidifying in their gut, thus eliminating the need for the previously mentioned evacuation tunnel. If you get my drift. No, 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 no. I don't know if we can even keep this story <laughs> in the episode. This is the mystery now. Like, more than these group of people who didn't have butts, I'm more intrigued by how this Greek fellow found it out. No matter what story he came up with, he was up to no good if he found this out about these people. For sure. <laughs> But there are plenty of stories like this about a, a tribe of people that only had one leg and they just sort of hop around on the one leg. Hmm. There's a monkey man. There's a were tiger man. There's all kinds of just great mythology. Like, we don't have to go far to find interesting stories in this world. <laughs> where did you find this no buts people story? In the same book. It was included with... The ghosts, demons, and monsters. <laughs> so these are people. They're not saying that these are ghosts. No. Nope. They're saying these are just people. People, yeah. So they should have been on Ripley's Believe It or Not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were just medical miracles. That's what they were. Well, they're just, you know, slightly more mundane. I hesitate to even say mundane, but they're legends. They're just not of the sort of ghostly flavor like the rest that we've been talking about. Still interesting, though. Very interesting, yeah. Like, so many things to think about when you're lying awake at 3 a.m. Oh, me too. Uh, we'll, we'll share the book, too, because there's tons in it, and it's quite a fun little read. Nice little anthology. Anyways, that's it for me. All I have to say in conclusion is keep your third eye open and sharp. Watch out for dangling legs and keep your fish on lock. Respect your ancestors, unless they weren't very good people, in which case, keep some turmeric and iron on hand. Drink milk <laughs> to keep you strong and flexible, and be wary of strange, handsome men on islands. If it seems unlikely or feels weird, trust your gut, and keep the boots at bay. Totally, Alex. All of these boots we've mentioned in the last couple episodes, demons and boots, I feel like that Tazmapa was was the best one. All they wanted was a little beer or alcohol or whatever, and they just ride you for a little bit. <laughs> Don't be afraid of that. But the rest of them, man, they are some creepy, creepy, creepy ghouls. Yeah, man. Thanks, Alex. That was awesome. I love this whole booty lineup. <laughs> All right, listeners, let us know your thoughts. What did you think? Have you heard of these boots before? The... Mecho, the Gecho, the Berry, 
<laughs> um, and these no buts people, heard of them before? <laughs> Got any ghosts at your metro station? Um, all right. So I know I didn't plan for this, but now when you mentioned all this, I'm going to I'm thinking I'll give out like a little Bollywood corner recommendation. Yay. If I haven't done it before, I don't think I have. Have I recommended this one before, Alex? It's called Stri. It actually rings a bell. God damn it. See, I need to make a list of movies that I've already done. But in any case, I'm going to just do it now. And if we've done it, I'll delete it. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to have the reminder someone missed it before maybe they'll catch it this time so this movie is called Stri which means woman all right again playing on that misogynistic trope mm-hmm. of the female ghost out there to get single handsome single young men uh, but this movie is so entertaining it is amazing um, it's a 2018 movie and the whole plot i don't want to give it away there's a bit of a twist and stuff it's got great music like banging music and everything nice there's a village that is haunted by this ghostly woman no one comes out at night and you're supposed to like draw something uh, on on your door to keep her at bay okay something happens and the main character uh played by rajkumar rao falls in love with this girl and the two of them, along with his friends, start to investigate this boot that's haunting their town. It's awesome. Go watch cool. this movie. I don't yeah. want to say anything more, except that this is a very entertaining movie. It's actually uh, made in the style of a comedy, like a full-on like funny movie with scary parts in it. That's my jam. I love that. It's perfect. So you don't really get too wound up or too, like, creeped, scared out of your wits that you can't even watch it. Go go take a look. It's called Stri. For a second, I thought you were going to say that the main guy falls in love with a ghost. (laughs) I was like, what a twist. (laughs) (laughs) They kind of get entangled in this whole ghostly mess. Not by choice. Um, And then they're kind of trying to find out more and resolve like exercise the ghost or whatever but things don't go as planned something goes wrong cool perfect check it out good good that's it for bollywood current this time just one movie three there are many many horror movies in bollywood and uh, you know other um indian cinemas like in bengali uh, bengali malayali Tamil, Telugu, all these different like Indian cinemas have tons of ghostly movies, but most of them are like really terribly written, badly <laughs> acted. The graphics are garbage, so I I don't even want to recommend them. If I can think of some really good ones, I'll put them in the comments. Maybe people are interested, they can go watch. There is a classic movie from the 80s which i unfortunately watched as like a little kid and it it really messed me up for a while it was called rat or the night hmm and it it's the classic poltergeist style exorcist the exorcist style possession story okay it was really scary watching this as a child. I'm, I'm sure even now, if you watch it as an adult, it's got really tense and intense moments. So if you really, if you want to scare yourself, watch Rat. I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere. Cool, yeah. Watch it alone. Watch it in the dark. I'm seeing some like very excellent 80s hairstyles as well. So another reason in, in this movie. <sighs> Oh, man. Anyway, well, I hope everyone had a spookyish, uh, spooky season, Halloween week or whatever, if you celebrate it. If not, well, you know, that's fine, too. Eat some candy anyways. Ha <laughs> ha. No one needs more candy in their life. Um, You want to tell people to go do their thing? No, you tell them to do their thing. Oh, yeah. OK. So follow us on Instagram. Mail us at crimesfromtheeast at gmail.com. If you are able to, you can support us with even like just a few bucks a month on Patreon, Crimes from the East, or buy me a coffee, Crimes from the East. 
That's it. Uh, and if you are not able to financially support us, absolutely no problem. You can do stuff for free, for zero money. You can share us, share our link with your friends and family, your neighbors, even your enemies. Just send them a link and be like, listen to this. <laughs> That's one way you can support us. You can rate and review us on iTunes and Spotify. And five stars only or four stars. Like if you think we have room for improvement, which I know we do, give us four stars. If you're going to give us like one or two stars, that's on you, yeah. not us. Yeah. If you really dislike something that much, you just have to move on. Yeah. Find something that you do like. Find something that brings you joy. The fact that you go on and give something a one star because you don't like it says a lot more about you than it does about us. We know we are annoying. We know this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you're given one stars, I think you might be a boot. <laughs> yeah, we're not denying that a lot of the shit we say can be annoying. You know what you have to do? Move on. That's what you have to do. Skip. Five stars only, five star reviews only. And then you can go on our website, crimesfromtheease.com and go see it on the review page. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we do in the next episode. Stay on and listen to Crimes from the East, your Desi True Crime podcast with a little Salo. masala and spice. And if you're traveling, please don't ask people about their buttholes. You know, just mind your business. Mind your goddamn business. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.